Hi, and welcome to the Niagara College Greenhouse, um, the heart and soul of the Niagara on Lake campus. Um, I'm Matthew. We're back with the tour. Today we're going to do the greenhouse. We are here with my friend Terry Sherwood, who is from the greenhouse, who's going to explain a bunch of stuff. Um, for the holidays, the poinsettias are in bloom, as you can see all the beautiful colors. Um, back after this. Hi, we are back with Terry from the greenhouse. Um, once again, the poinsettias are in bloom. I just learned something interesting from Terry. Poinsettias are a symbol of the holidays because they bloom at this time of year. Um, so that's pretty much a fun fact for today to get us started. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna ask Terry a couple questions. We're gonna go over the, the greenhouse. Um, make sure we're open live on Instagram and Facebook. Ask your questions, okay? Um, to learn more about the college. If you have questions, this is going out to the whole world. It is our best way to get information to you. Um, first of all, Terry, welcome. Hi, you're welcome. Th thank you, thank you. <laughs> welcome to my my work. My, this is my office, actually. Yeah, my workplace. It's way better than my office. Yeah. Much. And it smells better. <laughs> um, Terry, just first, what is your role at the college and some background about yourself? Uh, I am a horticulture technician. I've been here working at the college for over 17 years. So obviously, I love my job and uh, love what I do. Love working with the students, and I'm more than happy to share share what we do here. Uh, what did you want to know? History about me? Just a little about oh, okay. yourself. Yeah. And I uh, your actually daughter. graduated from the horticulture program here in 99. This greenhouse actually was built in 98. So um, I've kind of uh, grew with this greenhouse uh, right from the start. So I, I have a um, well, uh, well acquainted to all the changes and, uh, and more changes to come. We're always changing and trying to stay what's current and what's, uh, what's important with our, for our student learning. Like Terry, uh, myself, many of us are graduates of the college that work here, so um, it's just a, a good place to come, go to school, and then hopefully end up with a job here. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us, besides the poinsettias, can you tell us some fun facts about the greenhouse? Uh, our greenhouse is uh, 16,000 square feet. It's divided into four zones uh, with doors in between each zone so that we can control the te temperature, humidity, lighting, um, so we can grow different crops. Our first zone is our propagation area, which might be a little bit more um, humid and uh, the lights are on right now in our propagation area. And we do have underbench heating for those uh, nice seedlings or cuttings to, uh, so that they can grow some nice healthy roots. So that's zone one. Zone two we're in right now. Zone two is our largest zone and we have uh, many poinsettias growing in here right now. We grow seasonal crops right now as poinsettias. Come the springtime, it will be bedding plants, hanging baskets, annuals, annual plants. Uh, we also have zone three where we're growing peppers, tomatoes, strawberries, lettuce, uh, many uh, herbs, and, still, and also a little bit of poinsettias there because that is one of our biggest crops. Zone four is a little greenhouse and it, that's where we're growing our cucumbers right now. So we, as you can see, we grow a lot of vegetables. Our vegetables, um, it is a project for all of our uh, second year greenhouse students. So they do the crop work, they take care of the plants, and we sell the tomatoes, cucumbers, strawberries, etc. when they're ready. Uh, Benchmark, the kitchen and uh, restaurant that is on site, does buy a lot of our product and serves it. So we are very, um, very happy that we can have farm fresh produce and supply it to our, to our community. I did have a question from a, a Russian last week. Can you explain, I'm going to add a question here, sorry, uh, aquaponics, it seems to be very yes, popular. Yes, yes. Yeah, we do have an aquaponics system. What it is, is that we have fish living in tanks and the fish waste, or the fish poo, I guess, you want to call it, okay, it's waste, <laughs> it goes into, um, I think it's a filter system, and so the nutrients from the fish waste goes and feeds our lettuce. Right now we're growing um, lettuce with that uh, fish waste that's taking up the nutrients from the fish waste and we do have to add a few micronutrients but but uh, primarily it's just the fish waste feeds the lettuce we harvest the lettuce sell it eat it supply the the restaurant with it um the water then circulates back through now that it's cleaned and filtered by the plants and goes back to the fish tanks 
so it's a, a, a cycle of the water flowing through. Ideally, the fish can be harvested and uh, eaten as well. Um, so that's kind of the, the system there. Awesome. Can you briefly tell us about some of the um, programs taught in the greenhouse? So we have three uh, programs. We have greenhouse technician, landscape technician, and horticulture technician. The first year is a common year, so all of the students have the exact same classes. Second year is when they start specializing. So when they, when they realize that they really love greenhouse and want to spend more time in here and work with the crops, they would, they would do that in their second year of study and, and their courses are more designed for greenhouse. The horticulture students, uh, they're kind of middle of the road. They get greenhouse and they also learn landscape. Um, so they, they're kind of, they can go either way and that's what I graduated from was the, the horticulture uh, because I love both inside and outside work. And the landscape students, they get more into landscape design, hardscaping, dynascape, which is designing with the computer. Uh, so they're uh, more so outside, but they do still learn plants. You still need to learn your trees, your shrubs, your perennials. So uh, yeah, so it's a uh, wonderful pro program because you can take the first year and then decide which direction you want to go. Awesome, thanks Terry. Um, can you give us some, uh, maybe a couple specific examples of courses that students really enjoy and they really enjoy coming to? Uh, practical horticulture or hort practices is always nice because that you, there you get a real because um, rounded education because we are hands on. That class you get a lecture and is uh, it's in our uh, greenhouse classroom. You get a lecture and then you actually do something related to what the lecture was. So say if it's about tree pruning, then you're going to go out on campus and have a demonstration and hands on activity of pruning trees. Uh, we could also we do a whole lecture on poinsettias and then they would actually work with the poinsettias. Uh, so every week there is something that is related to their lecture and, and hands-on. Students also love um, IPM, which is Integrated Pest Management, and that has to do with uh, pests and disease in the greenhouse or on the grounds. So it's kind of like a treasure hunt where you go out and you're going to be scouting um, to look for these pests and disease and then how we're going to uh, ratify that either with biological controls, um, perhaps biological sprays or whatever practices we can do to, to control any, any issues that we might have. And a lot of our graduates are very skilled in this and get jobs in greenhouses as scouts and it's a, it's a wonderful job um, and if you're into insects or disease and some people are, um, they can, it, it, it's, a, it's a fun job. It, it can be very uh, profitable as well. A couple more questions for you. Um, explain how we have many, sorry, we have many learning enterprises at the college, the most in Canada. Um, I'm just wondering, can you explain how this is a learning enterprise? Okay, so our, our learning enterprise, what we do is we grow plants and uh, we want to see these plants in people's homes. Uh, we also, so we sell them. We have a little retail area where we sell what we grow. We also, uh, and it is grown by the students. It's the students will pop these up either with their co-op, believe it or not, our point studies are started in August. And we don't want to be thinking about Christmas in August, but that's when we have to uh, focus on that. So we, our co summer co-op students plant up the point setters. Um, the students come back in September and uh, the students do help out with watering, fertilizing, uh, spacing, pinching, anything that needs to be done and then we sell them to the public. That money then goes back into the program so that we can get our new equipment for say aquaponics or new hydroponics for our tomatoes. New, it, it takes a lot, the lighting, the pumps, that, um, so all that money then goes back to us for our programs and then we can offer more to our students. So how do, how do students now, we have a beautiful greenhouse here, um, which not many colleges do, how do students benefit from learning in this environment? Because this is real, on the, uh, real life training, on the, it's, it's job experience, because when they graduate from Niagara College, they can say, we have a greenhouse there. I actually worked in the greenhouse. I took part in mixing fertilizers. I took part in uh, irrigating, fertigating. I took part in harvesting the crops, uh, growing the plants. And uh, that hands-on knowledge is, is key for a, a great job in, in the future. Also vocational training, which Canada is becoming very famous for. So this is a perfect example of it. Um, we're going to go to the web now, and we have some questions coming in. I'm going to ask Madison. Um, Madison, can you read a couple questions for us? Thanks, Matt. Firstly, I just want to give a shout out to Osama. Hi there. He has a question from Facebook <laughs> Live asking, do you offer a program for one year in horticulture sciences? Uh, it is a two-year uh, certificate program. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'd be more than welcome to come for one year and you would get a great basis of uh, horticulture, landscape, and greenhouse. Um, 
I'm, I'm not 100% sure whether that would be a certificate or uh, be classified as uh, like court techniques or something. I'm, I'm not really sure, but yes, I'm, I'm sure you can come for one year. Thanks, Terry. Madison, another one? Thanks, guys. We also have a question here from Pablo. He says, hello, I'm from Mexico. And on Instagram, he asked, are there programs open to international students? Hola. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to learn Spanish, so I was practicing. <laughs> Where did the first point set originate from? From Mexico. There you go. There you go. They're, they're native plants in Mexico. And you probably think we're crazy, Pablo, that we are growing them and selling them here when you have them all in your, in your native surroundings. Uh, well, I'm sorry, what was the question? Sorry. International <laughs> students? Are there programs open to international students? Yes, of course. Yes, you just uh, go, to, go to the our website, uh, Nega College website, and they will direct you there on how to apply. The website is international.niagaracollege.ca. We have a chat line. Um, you can ask all your questions there. We also have regional managers, which you'll be directed to, who um, are experts in the region. Um, so just go to our website. You'll find it all there. Absolutely, these programs are open to international students. Next question, Madison. We had a question from Tori via Instagram. Am I allowed to go in and look at the plants? Yes, Tori, we are open nine to five, seven days a week right now. Um, our peak seasons are November and December. That's with our poinsettia sales. Uh, so we're seven days a week, November, December. And then we go to five days a week for January to mid-March. Then we're open every day, mid-March, all the way to September. Thanks, Terry. Another one from Instagram, Madison. Are there a lot of job opportunities in Niagara in this field? Definitely. We have a lot of greenhouses here. Um, Niagara is kind of like the banana belt, uh, um, warm, temperate climate, perfect for greenhouse growing. So, and also um, housing uh, development and whatnot. So people need their, their turf taken care of, their gardens taken care of. So landscape jobs for landscape design is very, very popular. Also, and landscape maintenance. Also, greenhouse jobs, there is a lot, especially, um, I don't know if we want to go there, but with the cannabis, we, they really need trained workers. Um, that industry is growing so quickly. A lot of our graduates get jobs, jobs there and are very, very happy, and their employers are very happy with them because they have the greenhouse experience. Growing, um, growing any crop, whether it's cannabis or poinsettias, it's the same principles that you're going to follow. So the, green, the experience they can gain here, they can carry over to many other um, types of growing. All right, we have our last one from Instagram, Madison. Thank you, okay. Another question we a little bit addressed earlier, but it's from Instagram from Dunlop. Where is it? What time does it open? What do you grow? Okay, so we grow seasonal crops. We are open at 9 a.m. Monday to Friday year round. Peak seasons, we're open weekends as well. So that, like I said, that's uh, November, December, and then from March to September, we are open uh, seven days a week. Uh, so nine o'clock and uh, yeah, come any, come any time, we'd be more than happy to see you. So we grow whatever plants are seasonal. Right now it's poinsettias. Uh, for Easter, it'll be Easter lilies, hydrangeas, gerber daisies. We have herbs and tropicals available um, uh, most of the time, most of the year. In the spring, we will have uh, perennials available, uh, flower, some small flowering shrubs. Uh, so what you'd see at a small garden center is what we're, you're gonna see here. We're also, um, we're located very close to Niagara Falls, the big famous waterfall, um, right in the heart of the Niagara region, which is great for growing any kind of crops. Terry, if you just very briefly want to tell us about why it's so good to grow crops in this region. Oh, because our, our temp, our, our winters are milder than a lot of Canada. Our soil here is amazing so that uh, uh, in, this, in this region so that you can grow out, outdoor crops very easily, whether it's vegetables or um, uh, ornamentals. So uh, yes, it is a wonderful place to grow here. Plus we have the, the people that want the plants. So you always have a customer. You can grow as many plants as you want, but if you can't sell them, you can't keep your business alive. So we need the audience, the people to come, purchase our plants, uh, and and a lot of trained skilled workers in this area too so it's a wonderful place to be last question we just had one added go ahead Madison thank you okay we have one here saying I read something about a program called be world ready are there any travel opportunities with the greenhouse um, I, with, the, with the greenhouse we do uh, small field trips with our students 
So our, we, we do go to Montreal with our horticulture and landscape students. That's part of the part of the program. We do that in September with our second years. We tour the Mat Mat Montreal Botanical Gardens. We visit some sites where they do sustainable vegetable growing, which we do do here on site as well. We do grow a lot of vegetables. Um, our greenhouse students go to Leamington, which is a very large uh, greenhouse area where they have um, greenhouses that are 60 plus acres of tomatoes, strawberries, that sort of thing. So our, stu our, our students do tour and get to um, get, gain some more experience that way. World Ready is a different program. Um, we do have one of our instructors, uh, Bill McDonald, he takes a group to the Dominican every year and they do try to teach sustainable uh, food production there with the, uh, with the uh, locals. And I think Leamington's what, the tomato capital of Canada? I believe so. <laughs> um, so that's it for our questions for now from Instagram, Facebook and here at home. Um, I'm going to ask Terry to bring you um, all around so you can see our greenhouse from wherever you are in the world. Um, beautiful colors, beautiful poinsettias, and I'll leave you here. Terry, if you give a quick tour and show them the different sections of the greenhouse. Thank you. My pleasure, Matt. Thank you. All right. So what we're going to do, we're in zone two, like I said. We're just going to zoom around so we don't lose our uh, Wi-Fi. So behind me, you'll see our uh, tomatoes. Very tall crop in the background there. That's how tomatoes grow. Um, these are an indeterminate variety, so they will just keep growing, 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 and keep producing fruit. So, that's our tomatoes in there. Do we want to pop in there and have a look? Give it a try. If you lose this, don't, don't be afraid. We'll, we'll be back. So, there's a lot of cool things in this house here. So, over here, we have tomatoes um, growing. Those are our uh, tomatoes, uh, cherry tomatoes and tomatoes on the vine, or TOVs. On the right-hand side is peppers. So we're going to have green, yellow, orange uh, peppers there, and red. Here we have towers. So we are growing. These are just cycling through. Uh, there is no soil in this. This is just grown in an oasis um, foam. So we have uh, violas here, or pansies, which are an edible flower. Kitchen loves those as garnishes. We have Swiss chard and a variety of different uh, uh, kale uh, in this here. We also have a little experiment here going with Walker, Walker Industries, trying to keep things out of the landfill. So we are learning how to uh, make a product out of the rock wool that we use hydroponically, and we are breaking that up and mixing that with soil media, and we're doing a, a project there just to see how production is with that soil. So hopefully that will be new and on the market uh, sometime in the future. Uh, and this is our strawberry plants here. These will be loaded with strawberries uh, early next year and we do sell those to the public. Very sweet, very delicious, wonderful strawberries. Uh, okay, so then we're gonna go back over here. More poinsettias on this side, as you can see. A lot of different orders we have pulled aside. We do uh, take orders for businesses, uh, sometimes school fundraisers, so we do, do sell some of our uh, poinsettias that way. And then we're gonna take a peek over at our cucumbers, which are over on my left shoulder. And that has greenhouse over there. That is... Um, Cucumbers, we can go there? Okay. Walk this way. Follow me. Okay, so this is our propagation area. I'll just ask the students to step aside for a minute just so we can have a look. So this here is the propagation area I was telling you about earlier. So we have underbench heat to heat the nice seedlings and, and the roots of our cuttings. So this is where it all starts. Uh, a wide variety of material. We can grow vegetables, cactuses, um, ornamentals, a lot happening there. And over here is our, our greenhouse where we grow our, our cucumbers. So that's our little zone four. In behind here, we have a, our classroom. So this is, we're just leaving the greenhouse and then we have a classroom known as our potting shed. So that's where we get dirty and we actually do our hands-on activities. And there's also a work area in the first zone for, for activities as well. All right, so hopefully you guys can come by this area as well, but we can't get out there yet. There's lots, lots of activity out there. So please come by. We're, we're here every day, this time of year, 9 to 5. So please come by and join us. Okay, I'm just going to wrap things up here with Terry. Thank you for the tour. As you can see, it's a beautiful place um, to come to study, to work. Um, Terry enjoys it. From, uh, yes, I do. 
<laughs> two, from two graduates. I also love it. Um, she did mention the Walker Industries. We are now Canada's number one institute for research, number one college for research studies. So just that's a good example there. Um, before we wrap up, I would like to invite all of the future students coming in January and all students interested, please December 13th, we will be having our holiday Facebook Live from Niagara. Um, you can answer any pre-departure questions relating to your flight, your housing, um, your immigration. Please, it's a good way. You come on Facebook Live, you can answer our questions and um, we will have all the answers for you from the appropriate people. Um, once again, Terry, thank you. Oh, thank you, Matt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, no problem. Um, and we will be back December 13th, so tune in then. Okay, look forward to seeing you all. See you later. Thank you.